so we went upstairs, checked the wiring on the thermostat. It's just a generic Honeywell. Came down here and noticed one of the elements was on. So what I ended up doing was unplugging the thermostat wires from the control board. That's the easiest thing. So we undid RGWY and all that. And it's still running, meaning we're still pulling amperage on our relay and the relay's sticking on. I think that particular relay also does the blower at the same time. Boy, you can feel the heat. Just the bare bone minimums to get you by. Save a couple dollars on wire. Our relay is this one right here that seems to be sticking. Supposedly not running, but I think they might have an outdoor stat that's shutting it down. So unfortunately, we're just going to have to kill the power there and uh, kind of go from there. I'll have to go pick up one of those little relays. We took the little rectifier board off of the relay. That goes right on top of it like that. Pops down on top of it. But that's the little relay there. It's rated for 25 amps. And on average, most of the strips pull about 20 to 22, so you're just the borderline uh, for what it's rated for. Sometimes 30 if you're at 277, 0412, so 2012. Lasted almost two, 10 years. I feel like we should replace both of them, honestly. If one went out, the next one's getting ready to go out. Went ahead and got both of them, she okayed it. So we're gonna go ahead and get those both replaced. That'll make it a lot more reliable, hopefully, for another 10 plus years. We got everything in place and changed back to exactly the way it was. Let's go ahead and flip that on. Of course, the thermostat's probably calling. Let's unhook this again. Let's do this one more time here. There we go. Thermostat's not calling. That's good. The heater elements do not delay at all. They go immediately because it's just a relay. Okay, zero amps on that. Zero on that one. And zero on that one. That's good. Let's go ahead and plug this thing in. Thermostat's probably gonna boot up. This definitely is one of the worst designs I've ever seen in my life. They should have put a strip in there. Let's go upstairs and turn the thermostat on. We'll put it in auxiliary heat first. Okay, so it wasn't running when it was in the other mode. Don't sound like it's doing real good in this mode. Oh, that's kind of scary as hell. Why the hell would they have ever used aluminum foil? so they can dangle down. That is nice. That's really nice. And you can see she has a little bit of sulfur water, it looks like. You can see the carbon buildup. I turned the power off. Oh, I didn't even see that. Uh, that's partially loose. Oh, look at that. That's always something. Of course, it's on a day when we're busy and it's eight degrees out. Every one of these are garbage. So let's chop these off, get some new ones on there. I tightened those up as best I could by just squeezing them. They, that one there needs a better squeeze. Oh boy. This is one of those residential calls that just keeps giving. You can uh, see that we got the breaker on there. Can't hardly focus on that. Is that a bad wire there. It sure looks like it. Anyhow, going across the breaker here at the bottom, we've got no voltage. Go to the top of it, and we do. So we got a bad breaker. Freaking junk. There it reset. That's not very good. Nope. Did not reset. She said she had some electrical redone once, and obviously the breakers have already been damaged. 
All right, so we gave it a little tap. There must be some crud or something in that breaker because it now kicked right on for me. As you can hear, the fans are running. We got 242 down on bottom. 242 on the bottom of that one. Here's our readings. We've got 20 amps on that one, 20 amps on that one, and 20 amps on that one. All the strips are working. That needs replaced. We'll have to get that. Uh, let's go ahead and check this heat pump out, make sure it's working. Went ahead and got the filter swapped out. She's got a few clean ones over there. We took that piece of insulation, the reflective coating, took it off. It still has insulation there, so it won't short out. Got new crimp-ons on there. That is not a normal crimp-on. Took the limits out, squeezed those down. They look better than what they did. The uh, crimp-on there got replaced, and that one over there was able to be squeezed down also. It uh, honestly feel like those limits should be changed as well. Okay, this just keeps getting better. It's not even really a breaker, it's just a disconnect. You have two elements on a 60, pulling 20 amps a piece. You have a th single element that pulls 20 amps on a 60. Then you come over here and you're like, oh, look at this. We've got them all combined together under one two-watt aluminum wire. Well, let's go over here and look at our breaker box, see what's feeding this. So we go over here to this disconnect box and look what's feeding it. A 60 amp breaker. So I start to pull it out and I'm hearing crunchies already. Yeah. It's pretty much burned it up because they've been overloading the stupid thing all this time. You can't pull 20 amps per element. Just say 22. 246. So there's 64 amps. Plus the blower. Another 5 or 6 amps. There's 70 amps. You need to be 20% underneath your breaker. Should be about a 100 amp breaker. Supposedly 2 watt aluminum. I'll have to double check the charts. Somebody's telling me that it's good for 100 need a 100 amp breaker but now what damage has been done to the bar so I gotta get that out of there real quick like I said this is just the gift it keeps on giving that breaker is jacked that is not good not good at all and those lugs you can't fit that big a wire under there you know what these did they chopped off a couple strands so it would fit. We might be able to rearrange some of the lower amperage breakers up to the top up here, but that thing, yeah, it's right on there with two smaller breakers, but my goodness, that's just absolutely asinine. Okay, I did double check with the electrical company and stuff, and this 222 wire is rated for over 100 amps, so we do got us a new breaker here. Look at the lugs, they're actually big enough to handle it. So we're going to get rid of these pieces here that are cut off and just get a whole new fresh piece. Let's go ahead and kill the breaker main. Let's see if we can find some better spots in here. That right there looks a little bit nicer than what the other one does. Let's take a look underneath here and see if some of these other ones look any better. Yeah, those look a lot better too, but unfortunately they probably, yeah, they might actually reach up there. So let's see if we can't switch some of these lower amperage ones up here to the top. Let's make sure that's completely off. Completely dead. Works there, not there. That is so bad. Half this is not labeled anyway, so not a humongo deal. Let's put this 40 back where it was at. That way not more than one thing's off. We'll move both these up higher. Got those in place there, because these are just plain screwed up. There's that. There's that. We'll trim those up. That looks a lot nicer. And like I said, look at that. It actually fits in there when you unscrew it a little bit, but it'll fit in there. Went ahead and got her back into place. We had to do the bending of the wire, then put the breaker in, then plug it into the breaker. Doing it in advance did not work out very well. Got everything better situated in here. Uh, we are good to go. Got that 40 back in there. I went ahead and relabeled these. Went over top of it. Those two that I moved here, just boom. Since they went stacked up, I just copied what was there to there. Overlapped it with that. Got the disconnect here. 
like I said, this is not a true breaker. All it is is a disconnect. Very expensive disconnect, to say the least. And there's our new board. Like I was saying, the way this thing is getting power for the blower motor, you're only using one speed, so it was no back feeding going on. The blue and the black come up here and one goes to one side of the relay and one goes to the other. The power side of the relay is the bottom, which is the black one. The black one is the normally open, which means when it's energized, it'll close, so if call for G. And then the blue one is the normally closed, so in heating mode, when it's relay energized, it instantly puts power then down to the blower. So that way they don't have to energize G for it to run. It's not like the old fashioned ones that had a, a bimetal uh, disc in there that's switched. We're gonna make sure these are tight. I hate crimp-ons for uh, high amp load uh, devices. I think it's a horrible design. It should be a clamp down, bolt down style design, but this is faster and cheaper. So that's the way they do it. As I got looking at it, it doesn't look like it's an option to put those spade terminals on there anyway. So we went ahead and stripped them. Tie them together, we're gonna make sure we keep yellow to the right, black to the left, that way the phasing stays the same. That way if by chance anything ever gets reversed in here, we won't have a dead direct short phase to phase. Got everything back into place here as far as the breaker. Everything's in tight, power's still off. Got the new board in there. Been double checking this here just to make certain. You come down to here and you look at it and right here is the single speed blue for the fan comes up to obviously that spot there that normally close goes to the blue and then normally open goes to black so normally open is black or in the blue is normally closed whether or not that's how it was when i first did it i never touched that so i don't i don't think they had anything to do with it either way when you look at it it's no way that it should have been a problem because when you follow this black wires here it goes over to the transformer which is what they're doing right here. You follow the black, goes over to 230 volts of the transformer. You've got the blue wire, which comes down and just goes then straight through. The blue wire is getting powered off of the plug. The plug isn't showing you that that's where the relay's at, but all they're doing is making sure that the fan's getting power, whether it's being energized from G or whether it's being energized from the relay. So we should be good to go. Everything's back tight. Um, we got these on order, They're the uh, limits. They're not here yet. Everything else is good. Made sure all the wires are tight, nothing's touching anything, nothing's shortened. I'm always a little bit uh, more precautious after something like that catastrophically burns up when I had nothing to do with it that I can think of. But let's go ahead and turn on the main and let's see what we get. So always turn your head to the side. Good to go there. We're just gonna put it on regular heat for now. We've got it up to 72. That should easily cause the auxiliary to come on. Fan came on. I didn't have that the last time. We're still waiting there. You can see the hold. I just heard a double click. Heat just came on. We should be getting heat pump and we should be getting the auxiliary heat. Let's just go ahead and crank it up because I wanna make sure it comes on. Let's go out and see if the heat pump's running. So I'm not hearing the heat pump, but there could be an outdoor thermostat shutting it down. I thought I seen extra wires running out here. Be nice, well, this has got its own delay in there, so we may have to grab the nut runner to get it going. While we're down here, might as well check, see if this thing is running the auxiliary heat here. 20 amps on that one. 20.6 on that one and we got 20.7 on that one so grand total you've got around uh, 62 amps something like that so we're not blowing anything up that's a good thing let's go ahead and get this cover on it and find out what's going on with this heat pump maybe it's just a delay hopefully with the circuit board okay good sign the heat pump is running not gonna be the most energy efficient thing today but it's a lot cheaper than running 60 some amps of current versus what this thing's pulling. And getting a look inside here, we do have an outdoor thermostat. The compressor's pulling five amps. So you wonder why people in Ohio have a heat pump? 
it's for people that live out here in the country that don't have natural gas and don't want propane. Uh, you know, propane, you got to buy all of it up front. Boom, 400 gallons. Could be $1,000, could be $500. Just depends on how much you're getting screwed by the government that day. So we're at 5 amps versus 62, 63 amps inside. It's kind of a no-brainer. It looks like we got it shutting off somewhere around 20 degree mark here. Looks like we got a dual temperature deal here. Not sure why they have two of them, but from what I'm seeing, you've got yellow wire there. Yellow captures it and sends it back on this blue wire. The blue wire is going to, looks like a green wire, which I'm going to say shuts off the heat pump when it gets down to 20. And uh, that's the end of it. Now we could go further just to test it. Oh, that's froze up. That one does. All right, well, let's be good stewards here and see if we can switch it to the other one. I went ahead and opened up the circuitry here. Nothing changed. I've tried it between all different three terminals there, open and close, and this is not working. Nothing's opening or closing at all. So whatever it was, which I have a feeling they're either bringing on electric strips when it gets down to a certain temperature, or they're trying to shut down the compressor. Let's see if this is hot. Yes, it is hot. So the suction line is pumping out hot gas. That's good. We've got blue going down, connecting to Y, which is yellow. Yes, yellow. And blue goes to G or green. Got to go inside see what that green goes to. And, uh, when we come back with the limits, we could replace the thermostat at the same time. My feeling is it'd be nice if you had a fancier thermostat. That way it just automatically did it based off outdoor temperature. But who knows? I came down here. Here's the green wire. That's for the fan green. Here's the green coming to the outside. Somebody has already unhooked it. And there's the yellow going right from white on the Y call on the thermostat straight to the outside unit. You can tell that that's the green because the other green is left over. There's a two wire going and doing something, a red and white. That is going to this one here, which kind of goes to there, which goes to there, which goes up, over, and around and outside. And I don't even see that one outside, so. To say the least, nobody's doing anything with that. So she's got to turn that off when it gets super cold out. There's always some heat out there. Um, there's a couple different philosophies here. I've seen two different ways of doing this. You can set it up so that, and the reason why I've got this blower like this is so that it's sucking the air through the evaporator when it's running since it's in heat mode. But a couple different things that I've seen them do, I've seen them stage the electric elements so that they bring them on as it gets colder to kind of supplement the heat. Because you know, back in the day, we didn't have all this fancy ECM blowers and automatically stepping down as it gets colder and all that fancy jazz. So we did stuff with outdoor thermostats, old mechanical ones like that. That could have been what it was. I've seen them just go ahead and break Y and send it right back on W. So that it just runs the electric strips and shuts down the heat pump altogether. So there's a couple different things they could do. She's not been having that for a while, so we'll go ahead and get this tucked back in there and button this thing up. Okay, this thermostat obviously goes all the way up to 70, which is what we're set at. Auxiliary heat's staying on. It would be nice if it had a uh, step in between there. Let's go down one, see if it all shuts down. Yep, it took forever, but the thing finally shut off the fan. It appears everything is shut down. That'll time into the heat pump section. Go make sure that nothing's running down there on the heat pump or on the air handler. I do not hear the electric strips humming. Do not feel any heat. All right, guys, too, uh, just so you know, usually on this kind of wiring system, we normally would have is a six gauge wire that would take care of two of the elements, which is 10 kW, and then a 10 gauge wire for the other uh, 5 kW. And that's usually the cheapest way of doing it. Run this bigger wire is not usually cheaper. It usually costs more. Also, the breaker is sized for the wire, not for the appliance. Uh, down here, the air handler did not come with any electric strips. So there's no amp 
rating for what it's supposed to be. The installers did not put that on there. You gotta have at least 65 amps to 70 amps. With the fan and everything, say about 72 amps. You wanna stay 20% underneath what your breaker's rated for. So if you have an 80 amp breaker, you wanna stay 20% under that. That's how the breakers are really rated um, in a perfect world, which isn't obviously a perfect world. So even though we have a 100 amp circuit available, we're only using about 70 amps, 73 amps, somewhere in that ballpark. That's shooting high on the motor amperage. Um, but we're good to go on that. Let's go back outside. So what I ended up doing was taking this uh, thermostat out. There's no reason to having it in there. How much time did we waste trying to track down and see why it wasn't working, what it ran, things like that. If you're not gonna fix the job, get rid of that garbage, get it out of there. Another thing I noticed too, this unit is newer. This is a 2016. The air handler downstairs is a 2002, so it's been changed and updated there. Now, whether or not the uh, evaporator coil was updated, I'm not 100% certain because it is aluminum. So there is a good chance that that evaporator was changed. Now, what was kind of weird was I noticed it's not a TXV, it's just an orifice, which I know carriers always been using orifices on their outside, but on the inside, usually use a TXV, and it doesn't have one, which is really surprising means that unit there probably is a little more efficient than some of the uh, standard ones back in its day. So you about would have had to have changed that evaporator, I would have figured. But anyhow, guys, I just kind of wanted to mention those last few things there. We just got to come back and get the uh, limit switches on, the air handler. Everything's checked, made sure everything kicks on, kicks off. If you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, you know, the thumbs up really helps. It doesn't cost you a nickel. It takes a lot of time to do these. It's here to help the young guys out, and it's here for entertainment for those that just uh, know everything already. So if you guys would, hit the thumbs button. Check me out on Instagram and Facebook. Until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.